Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. My name is Crown and today I'm going to read you some very interesting stories that I hope that you're gonna love. And now, without further ado, let's go! This story is long, but I promise to write it. Bear with me, please. So I used to work as a cashier in a supermarket. The story took place on my first day of work there and my second day working at a cashier on my own without a supervisor sitting next to me, teaching me the ropes, I mean. Yes, I had two days of training. I'm sure most of you will figure out in which country I live from the following explanation. It will become relevant later. Supermarkets in my country are a zoo on a regular day. However, Thursday and Fridays are absolute mayhem at the store and are a special kind of hell. Fridays, the store closes two hours before sundown as do most stores in this country. During winter, this means around 2 p.m. and in summer closer to 4.30. People get crazy on Fridays trying to get all their shopping done and get home in the time to cook dinner. If you can avoid coming to the store on Friday, please do so at all costs. I always told people that after this day. The reason Thursdays are hell is because we get all the customers who don't want to come on Friday. Now this was early evening on a Thursday, at a time when the store is absolutely jam-packed. We had 10 checkout lines open and every line had at least 6 to 7 people in line. Basically, if you are stuck with a slow cashier, there is nowhere else to go. Unless you have 10 items or less, everything is going well until I get a customer with 2 shopping carts full of items. Mostly non-perishable items. And these are the large cards you find around big stores in the US, like Walmart. I found out later he buys this for a community center in his neighborhood and he fills up this pantry twice a year. Nice guy. He greeted me very politely and then said the most dreaded word I could have heard that night. This will be a delivery. Just a quick break from the story to explain why this was so dreaded especially on a day like today. When we get a delivery, the cashier will call a helper from the store to help bag the groceries. Usually, people do their own bagging. The bags would then be placed in plastic containers and containers would then be placed on top of each other and taken to the back fridge until delivery. A regular delivery is usually between 3 to 4 crates. Each crate has a number, which then I have to input all of them into the computer along with the correct delivery address and phone number, and print out with a receipt and place copies in the crates. Even for a small delivery, this always takes extra time. Back to the story. This guy has two full carts and wants a delivery. I say, sure, no problem. Then I turn to everyone else in line and let them know that this is a delivery and it will take just a bit longer than usual and apologize for any delay this may cause. We always do this so customers will be aware of the delay and can move to another cashier if they are in a hurry. This is when the whole line groans simultaneously. I don't blame them. There was nowhere else to go. I could see every one of them craning their necks to check out other lines and they all decide to stay. So I start scanning as fast as I can. I'm pretty good with numbers so even though it's my first day, I remember many of the codes and things are moving rather quickly. I get to a point where the bagger can keep up with all the items and the area to the left of me. Where I place all the scanned items is just a mountain of cans and bags of chips and whatnot. I can't even scan another item cause they are falling back onto my scale. At this point I stop and ask if he wants help bagging. The customer and the bagger are both appreciative and I help bag groceries for a few minutes, just enough to clear some space so I can continue scanning items. This happens every few minutes. It gets full and I stop the help, clear some space and keep going. This is where the Karen comes into play. She is maybe early 40s, long brown hair and looks nothing like a Karen, except for the way she was standing. With one hand on a hip that's extended so far to the side, I wasn't sure how she's still standing. She's in my line, about 5 to 6 people in front of her still. This is the conversation that follows. Hello, what are you doing? Me, not answering because I didn't think she was talking to me. 
I just kept scanning. Excuse me, what kind of cashier are you? Why aren't you doing your job? Stop being lazy and do your job. She screams at the top of her lungs. I'm sorry ma'am, I'm just trying to... That's not your job. You are a cashier. Do your job. I realize now after reading so much Reddit stories that this would have been a perfect chance for some malicious compliance. I'm sure some of you hope that I did just what Karen wanted. Too bad. I didn't know about it then. Or that it was only my first day on a job. That's not what happened. Although I dream sometimes that I did just that. Sit back and sip my coffee until the space is cleared for some scanned items. You know, be a cashier. Uh, next time, I guess. I tell her, I'm just helping to move things along faster. If this is a problem or you are in a hurry, feel free to move to another line. I'm sure another cashier will be more than happy to serve you. I may sound like I'm the jerk with this line, but I said it really nicely. Not sarcastic at all. Obviously, that didn't help. Karen, still not listening anyway, and having none of it, just do your job. You are a cashier. What is wrong with you? Are you stupid? You should be fired. I stop listening at this point and don't answer, as I'm still helping to bag and scan as fast as possible. Knowing it's not gonna help anyway. However, I see one of the managers, let's call him Joe, walk up to Karen. Joe is great, by the way, always helping the workers. He asks, what seems to be the problem? Karen, still yelling, tells him, your cashier is awful. She's lazy and she's not doing her job. You should fire her. Tell her to do her job because she's not doing it. She kept repeating that a few times like a freaking broken record. Joe looks over at me for a second, understands exactly what is happening, turns to Karen and says, Can't you see she's trying to help? She's trying to make this go much faster. Now Karen starts screaming words, I'm assuming, but I couldn't really make them out. She was practically foaming at the mouse. Joe tries to calm her down by explaining, or at least trying to, how me bagging items is actually helping, and this makes Karen even more irate. If you can believe it. Spit flying from her mouth, arms flailing, screaming like a banshee, and suddenly I notice an older woman, the nice old lady of the story, must have been around 80 years old trying to get Karen's attention by tapping her on the shoulder. It takes a few tries, but she finally gets her attention and spins her around by the shoulder. Hey, Karen. Karen, excuse me. Karen. The old lady yells at her. What? Your daughter is crying. And this is when the entire store seemed to have stopped talking all at once. Like someone pressed mute and turned out the volume. The sea of people in front of me parts a bit, and we all look down and see a little girl, who couldn't have been older than four, clutching her mother's thighs, pulling her eyes out, snot coming out of everywhere, hyperventilating. This girl was terrified, and I can't blame her. Seeing her mother going off like that must have been terrifying, and she has no idea what is happening. She's in a huge store where she knows no one, and she is practically invisible. The silence lasted an entire two seconds, because that's when Karen started yelling at Joe. Look what you did! You and your stupid lazy cashier made my daughter cry! And a bunch of other crazy sounds that were perhaps supposed to be words. Things happened in slow motion for the next few seconds. She started to swing towards Joe. Joe is not a big guy, but he's bigger than Karen. That's for sure. And he is not Easily intimidated. Not his first Karen, I suppose. She would have dicked him right in the face if the old lady hadn't grabbed her in a bear hug to stop her. Yes, she did. I had to pick up my jaw off the floor. At that point, other customers got involved trying to peel out the nice old lady from Karen and stop Karen from trying to kill Joe and from Joe trying to kill Karen because he was fuming by them. At this point, I saw mall security storm the castle. Our store was inside a mall, and the CU people just surrounded Karen, and I couldn't really see much of anything anymore. Kind of like football players when there is a fumble and they all jump on the ball. By the sound of yelling getting farther and farther away, I figured Karen was being led either to the back office or to the mall security office, the mall jail. 
this entire time this is happening, I'm still begging and scanning items. And I'm about halfway through this customer's purchase. I finished up with him with no more problems. He was very nice and thanked me profusely for helping with the bags. Even though technically it wasn't part of my job. He said I was the fastest and nicest cashier he ever had the pleasure of meeting. I was just happy to help. No one else in my line complained. I actually got compliments from people about keeping my composure. Apparently many cashiers in my country think it's okay to yell at customers and just be plain nasty. I worked in customer service for many years prior and I have never yelled at a customer, even if they deserved it. Once the rush died down a bit, I went for a break and I met another employee in the back room and I started to tell him of what just happened when he cut me off. She was yelling at you? <laughs> I heard that. Well, everyone heard that. But I had no idea what the hell was happening. He told me that the police were called and Karen was escorted out of the store and the mall in handcuffs. I filled him in on everything and we spent the next 30 minutes laughing. I don't know what happened to the child, I'm assuming they called another family member to pick her up. I also don't know what happened with Karen after that since I ended up working there for another year and I never saw her again. Hopefully, she learned to do her grocery shopping on Tuesday slash Wednesday or was possibly in prison or has a rest. This was the first Karen I had the displeasure of meeting while working at that store, but definitely not the last who listened to the entire story, thank you for sticking with me through to the end. I hope it was worth it and you got some sense of pleasure or justice from the end result. I will work on my writing skills so the next stories I may write, that may be long as well, will be easy and entertaining to listen to. Years ago I worked at a convenience store and this store handled a lot of cash. We had a sign stating bills over $20 were only accepted with manager approval. In practice, we could accept them after using the detector pin and visual inspection. We also had a policy that we had to keep the cash in a drawer under a certain amount. We had a safe system to make drops and get change, but it had limits and timers when dispensing. Depending on what was needed, it could take 30 minutes to make change for a $100 bill. I was solo on graveyard. Kept my drawer low and didn't have to request change often. The drawer had 5 slots for bills and 5 pockets for coins but we only kept 1s, 5s, 10s and 20s in the slots. Another bill slash checks were put under until we had enough for a drop. The extra coin pocket was used for dollar coins. Half dollar coins, coins people left. Some people would tell us to keep the change and so on. If someone was a few cents short, we'd use a spare change. I kept my drawer under the limit. When I was in a graveyard, I was solo and kept my drawer very low and didn't have to request change often. One night, one of our odd regulars came in and bought a bunch of stuff. He paid with Sacagawea dollar coins. They didn't fit in the safe tube, so I had to keep it in a drawer. It was just over $100 in coins. I spread it out over all the slots so the one side wouldn't get too heavy. The drawer would stick if it was too lopsided. I had also made a lot of change for payphones, the air and water machines, people buying items to get change for laundry and so on. I was down to three $1 bills, the Sacagawea dollar coins, zero quarters, a few dimes and some nickels and a bunch of pennies. A guy comes in and comes up to the register with a 10 cent candy. He slaps a $100 bill on the counter. I ask him if he will be getting anything else and he says no. I ask if he has anything smaller and he says no. So I tell him don't worry then. The candy is on the house. I can use a have a penny, leave a penny money. He gets mad and says he won't take charity and I need to make change for him. I try to explain that I don't have the cash in my drawer and it would take 30 minutes to get the change. But he keeps interrupting and not listening. He yells, You are required by law to take my legal tender 
and make change for me right now. All full of attitude and jerkness, so I say okay. He acts smug like he wants something when I pick up the bill. I pull out my detector pin and he starts whining. I use a pin in view of the camera, then I hold the bill up to inspect it in view of the camera. I then put the bill in a safe tube to drop it as we were supposed to drop large bills on a graveyard before even opening the drawer, then make the slip and drop that after. The customer is still standing there smugly grumbling in. I enter the amount tendered into the register. Now the counter is raised and the drawer is just below the counter, so it's out of reach of the customers unless they lean and reach. It also doesn't pop open like usual this time because of the weight of the coins. I open the drawer and push the three singles back in their slot so that the customer can see them even if he leans over to look in the drawer. He's been dramatic and turning to make a show of how long he's waiting and can you believe this to an audience of no one. So he doesn't notice at first that I am pulling out all of those coins. I pull out the 88 cents or so and change, mostly nickels, and then start pulling out the Sacagawea dollar coins and putting them on a counter. He turns around and sees the coins and asks, what is this nonsense? So I tell him, I am required by law to accept legal tender and make change. You are required by law to accept legal tender as change. This is what I have available. He continues having a fit and says, You should have told me. I tell him, I tried explaining, sir. But you interrupted and insisted I make change. And I go back to counting out the 99 Sacagawea dollar coins. He's silent for a bit and then asks, How am I supposed to get this home? I told him I am not responsible for his change after I give it to him. He eventually gathers it up in his shirt. He pulled the bottom hem of his shirt about halfway up to make it look like a large pseudo pocket and slings off. Edit 1. I added a couple things to hopefully make it clearer. Saka Julia dollars are dollar coins that are golden colored and a little bigger than a US quarter. They were not very widely used and were disliked by many. They also were too big to fit in many coin machines or counters especially those made before the Saka Juwia dollars came out into sound and icing. They also didn't have the coin roll planks for them to my knowledge. I don't think the Saka Juwia dollars are minted anymore, but they are in circulation. And now we have reached the end of today's stories. Thank you for watching and see you next time.